uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Cover, for inviting me. So, the origin and the development of large-scale carbon romanesque portals between the end of the 11th century and the end of the 12th century remains a mystery. An explanation for the emergence of extensive iconographic programs on portals, many authors have pointed to concern of the church to externalize the liturgy. Thereby, the aim of these carvings was to celebrate, as in the liturgy, the perpetual time of God, his incarnation, and the condition and destiny of mankind. As with the audience for Greek elements, the Romanist viewer already knew what was going to take place, because it accorded with the Christian myth that was solemnly celebrated in the main liturgical feast. For that reason, strictly speaking, there are few historical facts in Romanist portals, and when they do appear, it is mainly to participate in the general content of their timeless programs. Nevertheless, the Romanist portal is most than just a reflection of liturgical texts. It is by itself a text. For that reason, we are akin to the observers of a stage performance. And the goal of our interest is not the dramatic test, the biblical, liturgical, paraliturgical, exegetical senses for the imagery. Rather, our concern is for the mise en scene of performance of this by the artist. As a result, the spectator is joined, a port joined to a portal which has been conceived as a performance text. The spectator is contained. In this overview, we must not lose sight to two issues related to the ontology of early Romanesque entrance. Firstly, as many Sapiro pointed out, image laden portals are the speaking face of the church and refer its will to communicate with the spectator. If we relate this statement to what was happening in the church ideologically, then it is very likely that Romanesque portals were a direct consequence of the attempt made by the Gregorian reform to Christianize society and to crown the church a predominant role in that process. Non Antola, Molina, Hacker, and La Puerta de las Platerías at Santiago seems to belong to this category. The affirmation and development of, the, of this new medium through the 12th century, and something whose aim was to provoke the curiosity of the viewer into going inside, led Charles Alman to compare the Scotch Romanist facade to the movie Matthew or cinema posters of our contemporary culture. This is an extravagant comparison, but it's one that conceals and the never and the and the never certainly that in the dark world, after night has fallen and there were only torches and candles to see, the contemplation of this luxurious stone facet would convert them into true into true works of artifice. Even thought, we have very few tests that enable us to reconstruct the impact of this entrance of 12th century audience. There is no doubt that from the start the role was to be begun by the crowd, crowds who frequent the adjacent public places. This is the second issue that I would like to underline regarding the ontology of this new sculpture about as a facet. They acted like a stage or backdrop to both liturgical and daily life. All of them intended to catch the eye of the transient public, the faithful on their way into church, the citizen carrying out the transaction of daily life in the adjacent squares, and the vote pilgrimage reaching out to the centuries celebrated for the care of the reliefs that decorated and embellished their women's facade. Some of them even called their audience to attention by means of description, description as we can see 
in the west portal of Hacke Cathedral or in the most seductive portal of the Zodiaco in Sagra di San Michele, which the sculpture of Niccolò invite us to look at. For that reason, we can state that the Roman portal, with the ceremony and the liturgical drama, was a genre that could be developed by the new church so to attract the attention of the public and thereby make the Christian faith more attractive. <coughs> Roberto Salvini, Willy Batsawalanda, Serafim Moralejo, Carlo Quintavale, and others have studied the depth, the impact of this new mass media in the formation of Roman special culture. The creation of uh, speaking portals in which figures are not only profusely accompanied by text, by titular and explanations, but are also organized discursively so that they communicate with other and with us, the historically and was linguistically, constitutes one of the great innovations of Roman's portal, or Roman's art. The rhetoric of the iconography programs deployed in this facade has been compared by the above authors to other emergent genres. The Sermon Rusticus in the case of Kong, the Mester de Hugaria and the Mester de Grecia along the way of St. James, of the Christian ethos in the so-called so Officina of Vigitalmo. It is true, as Conrad Rodolf has recently pointed out, that the 12th century uh, portal became the major medium for public art and public commemoration. For that for the reason, from the end of the 11th century onwards, its rhetoric was deliberately grandiose in emulation of the wonder of Roman monuments, Roman city games, triumphal arches, or skinny thrones. Other work in these retrospective structure, structures. Nothing was notwithstanding this from the outside Romans portal sought to creating all languages expressing the peculiar status of their speaking images and promoting themselves as backdrops of everyday events, from public courts, processions, dramas, histrionics, musicians, ordeals to ordinary quarrels. They existed in a state where literacy and literacy, written and oral culture, late Latin and vernacular language, gathered. A three holes of the sacred that could become profane, provocative, and vulgar. There, there we are before the origins of our dramaturgy and the takeoff of the body art. Boccaccio enables us to imagine, imagine how noisy and crowded the squares surrounding major medieval churches were, were in the Decameron, and how all manner of tricks and performance took place in these spaces. Three Florentine actors named Estecchi, Martellino, and Marchese, whose habit is, was to frequent the courts of the nobles and afford spectators amusement by, by assuming disguise and impersonate another man, arrived to the city of Treviso, and we were curious to visit the tomb of San Rico in Cathedral. As a church was thronged by pilgrims and the square was square by soldiers, Martellino decides to imitate a paralytic. Zapata, for these two friends, who cried at almost every day, step, make a way, make a way, Martellino distorted his body, mouth, and eyes in a manner horrible to behold in order to reach the tomb. Finally, before the sense wall, Martellino pretended to be held. By standards, we witnessed this, then raised such a clamor in order to San Rivo that even thunder would have been inaudible. inaudible. <laughs> this amusing story a genuine performance could equally have happened in the 12th century in other most famous pilgrim centuries, such as Kong or Compostela. Its narrative relieves the potential for the art of the body to express an exaggerated human condition. Indeed, Roman portals 
are meant to recover the three dimensional of the human body and to use fitness across every element of the structure. For that reason, it is likely that this inhabited architecture was perceived by the contemporaries to be alive. If we thus consider Romanesque art as an art of body, or at least as an art especially concerned to display the human figure in the monumental form, it is easy to imagine how provocative some of these images could be so to the Romanist audience. It is not a coincidence that some of the best known 12th century artists associated with happenings, as Jean-Jacques Lebel or Baudrillard, as Caroline Schneemann, quoted from Romanist art in their work. The first didn't hesitate to place a reproduction of the Ottoman relief of Eve crowding on a college to claim sexuality as a logic to overcome the catastrophe of the Algerian war. The later, in a picture of body action held in 1963, evoked the film Osarpen in Mossack to demonstrate her conception of the body as painting and celebrate the joy of the woman's body. Whether or not within this work are a challenge to the contemporary spectator, let us imagine how much more shocking the Romanist elements were for medieval finger intervention clerics. There on the whole, the fair house of the temple, on could encounter the naked figure of Luxuria at Mossack or the woman with the skull on the Platerius portal. According to Thomas Dale, the image of Luxuria at Mossack is linked to the concept of fantasia, as Kirk said. It that it calls to mind the visions of new bodies that haunted monks' minds who tried to refuse the pleasure of the world. Its depiction, depiction as the punishment of lust exorcised its potentially erotic attraction, which was definitely repudiated by the procession held in the alley invoking the Virgin Mary, whose reliefs were immediately opposite. Mossack, torch, thus became a performative space. Much more difficult is to reconstruct the original context of the mysterious woman with the skull. It is clearly relatively in its present setting, for which reason I have presently suggested that this relief, now situated in the left-hand tympanum of the soul portal, was originally carved for the right-hand tympanum of the Porta Francigena and was intended to qualify its profane and moralizing contents. This relief is an example of the beginnings and must be attributed to the master of the Porta Francigena. Most probably, it was meant to complement the subject of the frieze, solving the consequence of the original scene in the Golden of Porta, feminine luxury, vainglory, and discordia, and its anti 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 antithesis was represented on the left hand tympanum and depicted the, the Annunciation as happened at Mossad. Furthermore, the profane, moralizing, and nightly contents of the woman with the school ties in with another story repeated in one of the twisted columns on the same facade, certain episode of the infaithful love of Tristana Isot. A long time ago, Madalejo proposed that we read these carvings as episodes from the two journeys of Tristan to Ireland. The first depicting Tristan unconscious in a small boat in search of the ornament that can save his life after being watered by Monho's poisoned spear. The second depicting is sought dressing Tristan's wounds after the fight with a dragon. This topic has presently been revisited by Prabhupada prefers to see in, in a, see a cycle, excuse me, this is the image oh. who prefers to see a cycle of pieces directly inspired by the sculpture's knowledge of Roman cabins. It is true that the master responsible of this relief, the master of the two columns, probably traveled with the Abraham Mede in his first journey to Rome in 1100, thereby gaining access to the antique repertoire, repertoire 
or set off again and spread cold columns in Rome. Beyond his taking inspiration from Roman composition of the Ulysses means to improve his work, it is difficult to show whether he was really depicting an ancient rather than a medieval myth. Adding then a new controversial point to this debate, I have recently pointed out that in the first test of Tristan region, that of the Thomas and Gottfried from Strasbourg, there was included a split of reference to the example Levinis depicted in the Cabin of the Women with the School, that of the lover killed by the, by the husband of the adulterous woman who, having cheated him, was forced to eat her love's head and then horrified, commits suicide. suicide. In Thomas' version, he sought immediately after being married to Mark, the king of Cornwall performed this song now known as Let the Get Home, accompanied, accompanied by Tristan playing with his harp. I pray you will read the text because I have no time to read it. In my opinions, both carvings, the Tristan Colon and the Relief, were originally intended for the same setting, the right hand to the door of the bottom and children. This would explain not only the Benefica treatment of the sin of the son of lost men in Compostela, far from the type of monastic vision we see, we see in Massac, but also the oral tradition about its, its depiction that circulated among the pilgrims and is related in the Codes Calistinus, as true example relate to the very tragic end of Tristan I saw the story of the preview of the test. However, the relief was never set in the place to which it was originally assigned, and it was incorporated in some time between 1103 and 1111 to the decoration of the previous, due to a change in a plan for this latter portal. In my opinion, the Platerias portal at Santiago Cathedral constitutes, constitutes one of the most main examples of the performative background of Romance portals. According to the Historia Compostelana, every Friday, Bishop Camille presided over a public court there, flanked by judge and canons. This space was the platea, or platform, platform adjacent to the first Episcopal Palace. The Latin term platea originally referred to a public way, but it was also used in the Middle Ages to designate a place where justice was banned, especially when it was rough and elevated and was the case with the areas. Indeed, it was very common to hear keys in the space in front of the door to the medieval cathedral, as, it, as is well known. It is for this reason that these entrances were often decorated with lions, and leading to the throne of Solomon, the biblical jack par excellence, and we can see in other examples in Europe. This is how we should interpret, interpret the presence of, of these lions that still flank the two entrances to the Platerias, originally, originally four. These lions of early justice take on an eschatological significance just opposed, just opposed with the apocalyptic trumpets of the four angels of the last judgment depicted depicted on the standards of the arches. In Platerias, the display the space uh, becomes a backdrop for to human and divine <coughs> justice. It is right to celebrate both earthly and celestial performance. They are why they are they are why the trumpeting angels Kanjal, all to the last judgment, could remind spectators of the present of the holy. In many pilgrim centuries, as happened in St. Father Kong, during the patron feast, the statue of the saint and other sacred objects were carried in procession around the church, present to the shrill sound of elephants. The aim of this tanga was to announce the holiness of the performance and frighten away the, the devil, devils. The same magical effect 
was assigned to the college Calistinos to the Galician College, not the Scallop. Eh? It was worn by the Greeks, its royal arrows, devotion, and calms, enemies, the storms, thunders, and winds. But we do not have one of them these days. <laughs> As many authors have pointed out, the most important San Fuat Kong cannot be understood without making reference to the Versanti Fides of Bernard Angers and of the rituals practiced by pilgrims during their visit to the Abbey. This explains the vernacular and direct character of the iconographical program of the Timbalo of Kong. In it, the spectator could find more or less explicit reference to the stories related to the Book of Miracles, with where Sur Suri is recited in the Abbey as, as sermons during the patronal feast. For instance, they could then easily recognize in the fall of the rider uh, from the horse depicted in the timpano as provisional of the superior hell, the local history of renown, the Lord of Oben. Furthermore, the figure of Santa Foy and Prosthenesis receiving God's benediction carved in the timpano reminded pilgrims of the right of prostrating themselves before the sun and idol to obtain her protection. At this point, it should be underlined that in many places of pilgrimage and indeed at cathedrals, the spectator could witness the performance of a saint Jan Parestellans, the liturgical drama, whose goal was to make accessible and attractive the didactic themes of Christian dogma. Pioneers of the study of iconography, such as Nimal, have pointed out the influence of the representation of these liturgical dramas in the iconography of the great portals of medieval churches. One of these pieces was the Old Prophet Aru, a liturgical drama which described the announcement of the coming of Messiah by the prophets of the Old Testament as well by, uh, by the pagans. <coughs> the performance took place during maintenance of the feast of Christ Christmas, what uh, we call Christmas Eve. And it is said was to make the mysteries of the incarnation clear. The stone witnesses from the time of this performance, now mute, can be found in monuments from 12th century in Italy, France, and Spain. Among them, those that stand out are the reliefs of prophets with phylacteries, the scrolls, of the gems of the central door of the western facade of the Cathedral of Cremona and the columns and doors of cathedrals of Ferrara and Verona, all of them established by the Refugees, who profess to see in them a free version elaborated from the sermon the symbol. The figures of the frieze of the western facade of Notre Dame la Grande de Poitiers, and finally, the monumental statue columns of the Portico de la Gloria of the Cathedral of Santiago, which were analyzed for the first time by Serafim Alejo. This latter is, uh, without doubt, the most compelling example of paraliturgical ceremony of the Ordo Prophetarum and Women's Monument iconography. It is important to emphasize that the sketches made under the direction of Master Matteo were painted with sutus and brilliant colors, using reds of minion and cinnabar, blues of lapis lazuli, and golds of gold, gold leaf. This painting was probably done by painters who specializes in coloring of statues in polychromy, contracted for the final stage of the project and who were fundamental to creating realistic effects and improving comprehensibility. Indeed, these painters were responsible for characterizing the figures and reading the text of their scrolls. Beside the portrayal, the dress and the props of all of the characters also conceived coincide with the stage reaction of the Latin the textual version of the Ordo, that of Laon for one, that speak out to us of the bearded, bearded is a Isaiah and Jeremiah, or the juvenile face of Daniel, and of Moses Tabulalegi's parents, or Virgil further. Virgil is disappeared. <laughs> I'm so sorry, the last verse. Therefore, in 2004, 
an original or the prophet term was reenacted under the direction of Francisco Luan Gothic at the law of Santiago as an homage to Serafim Moralejo. For this show, with my scientific consultancy, the test of the music of the most ancient version, that of the Limoges from the 11th century, was combined with the set of the Portico de la Gloria. This unique experience helped me to understand more fully the iconography of the Portico as and its indisputable debt to the medieval liturgical performance. The procession used to finish with the blood covering can of civil, in which it was announced with certain crudeness the forthcoming signs of the last judgment, such as the descent into evil, the punishment in hell, and the coming of Christ showing his wounds. It is not a coincidence that the figure of the Eritrean civil is included in the set of sculptures and placed just within the medieval facade of the Narcos, facing the three arches of the portico that develop precisely a monumental program based on the descent into limbo, the large judgment, and the glory of Christian in the womb. In orchestrating this in his sculpture, Matteo proved his full command of the subject. He went back to the origins of the monumental figuration, to the subject, the mural paintings of St. Andrew in Fornis, where Sibyl is painted waving a scroll with the beginning of his prophecy, religion, signum, while looking at the monumental last judgment on the counter facade. I wonder how the protocol was really perceived by contemporaries. It is only obvious that for the canons and those directly involved in the cathedral ceremonies, that this, that this, that, that this liturgical lecture worked well. One of the aims of Metro work was to establish a new longitudinal axis in the sacred topography of the cathedral in three steps, the steps, the sculpture porch, the stone choir, Jure, and finally the collocation of the statue of St. James in the main altar for the solemn consecration of 1211. It changed the previous transversal itinerary created by Helm in 1100 and also the pigments new longitudinal uh, perception of the building. For them, the cathedral was made in a sanctuary, the goal of the crowded, crowded, crowded pilgrimage, whose location close to Finisterre animated the imagination of visitors to see in it as a legendary entrance to the afterlife. That is precisely how the monument is described in Vision of Turkey. Uh, 200 or 12 OCs. This is the first emphasis of Portico de la Gloria, where St. James, wearing the Episcopal robes, received the sound of this pilgrim. This clearly refers to the seated statue of the Trino, who invited him to look at the punishment of that met in the purgatory and the sounds waiting to be entered by St. Michael in the temple. Later, this crowded sound, this crowd met sound, rise up to the heaven from where all good have the music of all sorts of history musical instruments. There are no better words to describe the shocking experience of a recently finished painted portico and to perceive it again as a true performance. <coughs> I am finishing. Nevertheless, the phrases led us to see the work of art not with the eyes of the body, but through the sun's eyes. The realism of these sculptures with the painted leaves and the grounds and birds might be seen by contemporaries as fascinating but fake. It has been an autopus in the debates of Christian art from its origins onwards. For that reason, Matteo didn't hesitate to write on Jeremiah Jeremiah scroll the advice of the scientificum universal, all is the work of the artist. What was this an artist's vanity, or rather an exhortation to the spectator, not to be taken in by the faith? In fact, the test was taken from Jeremiah to denounce the fake, the fake idols. It is likely that it used it as a way to invite 
to the spiritual scene of the set in approach to his humility before God, humility before God, the armor creator, primum artifacts, such as in his portrait on the foot of the portico, where the master is depicted near as in this the main altar. Let me conclu conclude by saying that in Romanesque portals, performance was a way to catch the viewer's attention, a means to bring in the sculptures to life, an opportunity to improve the realism of art, and a space in which to create a polyphonic work. Without performance, the history of Romanesque portals wouldn't have 